This is Dr. David Hupp with his Print Media Ministries. This is a training video on how to take graphic arts negatives and turn them into digital documents that can be printed on a laser printer. What you see here is a picture of the Free Track Society in Los Angeles. It's been in business since 1897 or thereabouts. And they, everything you see here on these display tables of gospel literature and tracts was printed on a printing press. And now the time has come when they said that on September 14th of 2019 they're going to be closing this display room and they uh, will not, possibly not be printing on printing presses anymore. Uh, all these literature here were printed on printing presses, so we, they asked me to convert uh, the process over to digital printing so that a person with less skill can be able to make the, continue to make these tracks by printing them from a computer on, as a digital document onto a color laser printer. Here is a picture of a graphic arts negative on a more expensive, uh, larger scanner. And uh, in the old days, people stripped up their artwork on a pasteboard, and there was a horizontal or vertical uh, graphic arts camera in a dark room, and the pasteboard uh, was copied via this graphic arts camera onto graphic arts film, which is called orthofilm. And from this mask you see here, uh, in a light exposure box, a metal plate was made for on the printing press. And the areas that were exposed pick up ink in the area on non-exposed areas, uh, or the ink is resisted by uh, water. And so now uh, we're moving to a digital system, and this scanner here will convert the graphic arts negative into a uh, computerized, uh, digitized document. A normal scanner has a light source in the bottom, in the box, and this scanner is unique in that it has a a light that moves uh, in the top. And for doing negatives, I experimented for days different methods, and this is the best method to have the light and the source in the top in what's called the, it's an accessory by Epson called the transparency unit. This light is, this extra light is essential for getting uh, uniform quality, and I'll give you some examples now. One method of trying to reproduce a negative would be to put the negative down on a light table, a graphic arts light table, and fix a camera on a tripod above and take a picture of the negative, which is an example you see here that was done by a Photoshop in the town where I live. And you can see then it would have to be inverted and have the background reversed to a white and the white area is reversed to a black. And you can see you get uneven performance here. The word pray to God is not clear. Now you see the invert done in Photoshop under image and then adjustments and then invert. And you can see that when it's converted to what we want, the digital file for a laser printer, that word pray to God is still not acceptable. Uh, but the, the sharpness is pretty good. If we zoom in a little more, you can see that, that the letters, when they're really blown up big, uh, they're not very sharp. One thought was to just use a standard scanner without the transparency unit in the top light and scan a printed copy made by the printing press at the Free Track Society, but uh, it turned out if you examine this a closer examination and blow it up, that was uh, the, it, it looks good from uh, the print size, but when you bl blow it up, you see 
various things. The text is kind of ratty looking for whatever reason. And in addition, it picks up some of the back, uh, back, uh, the, the texture of the paper. And then if we look over here in a screened area, uh, these things are made by uh, solid color turned into a screen or a duotone will match the two colors, you can see these screens are not uniform and that would be solved by scanning the negatives instead of a printed copy. Here's another example of a free life track that I scanned a printed copy and may have cleaned it up a little bit in Photoshop. When you blow the uh, enlarge the title here, New Life, you see that it's beginning to pick up the grain structure of the paper that the ink was printed on and you get some background. You get more background this method of, of stray ink or whatever than you would scanning the negative. So let's drag across here and take a look at the text now. And uh, the text, so, and then we get all this background spots. I don't know exactly where they come from. And then you can see uh, after I possibly did a little cleaning up in Photoshop, the text is still not really sharp. Having decided on getting the bigger scanner, kind of a, almost a miracle the way we got it. So it came with a software called Silverfast, uh, which is uh, must be somewhat expensive. It has to have a serial number in order to use it. And so there's the standard scan software by Epson called Epson Scan 2, which I'll show you briefly how that works. This uh, Silverfast has a lot more detail uh, in the adjustments. And so I ended up calling the company in Florida that distributes this product. And the man was able to take over my computer with my permission and find the best settings for scanning these negatives into digital positives. When you get the scanner unit with the transparency unit, uh, you see it has this white board here that uh, goes into the top, the transparency unit, and that's for your normal type uh, scanning of a document. But in order to scan and utilize the light behind the board, it's built into the lid. You have to move it forward and backwards and take out this insert so we can use the backlight for scanning negatives. Before we get started on how to do the scan, I'd like you to see the finished result of the negative to the digital positive. You can see it doesn't look the best now because that's the best that the computer screen uh, monitor screen can display. But when we zoom in now with the zoom tool in Photoshop, we begin to see, unlike the previous methods, you can see that the the images are, are sharp, pretty sharp, and that the text especially, there's a noticeable difference of quality in, in the text. One drawback of using a 1200 pixels per inch scanning to get the best possible quality and using the negative method is that the resulting file size as you go over here in uh, Photoshop this is actually in, in, in Acrobat you the normal size when you're finished with the document in Photoshop one eight and a half by eleven negative converted to a positive can be like 128 megabytes but you can use the Photoshop to make a high quality print PDF and then when you go under properties in the PDF you'll see that this file is now down to 11.42 megabytes which is a, a size that can be posted on the internet and it seems that the quality uh, in, in the PDF conversion which makes it a far smaller uh, file size you still get the, the good version of the good quality uh, at, at the higher uh, magnification. I've turned on the scanner and now I'm choosing the Epson Scan 2 software that works with the scanner.
and here's the, the Epson scan uh, standard software that comes with the scanner is uh, a lot e simpler and so I'm just going to show you I singled out a, a small area with the marquee tool to scan and I have transparency unit selected here and I have black and white negative film 8-bit uh, grayscale 1200 dpi quality scanning quality high and under advanced settings I uh, selected uh, unsharp mask low and I made the contrast which uh, I put the contrast on 50 and the brightness I left it where it was so by just changing two things the unsharp mask to low and the contrast to 50 I was able to uh, get a nice scan using the Epson scan too. So the question arises what is the best resolution? Do I really gain anything by using the 1200 ppi pixels per inch resolution versus the 600 pixels per inch revolution, resolution? Because the 1200 resolution file is size is going to be uh, about 128 megabytes per letter size page. So here you see using the Epson scan software I have a side-by-side -side comparison over here on the left. Uh, we have on the left we have the 600 ppi scan I did first and then we have the 1200 ppi scan. You can't really seem to see much difference when it's they're both magnified and compared side by side at 400 percent magnification. On the other hand, when I use the more expensive silver scan software, uh, I did a side by side comparison, and you can see here that the 1200 dpi uh, scan seems to have a sharper Q than the 600 dpi scan when you use the silver fast. 8.8 .8 software that came with the Epson expensive tabloid size scanner. Now the Silverfast software is open and you can see it has more detailed settings. So a person wouldn't normally know what to do, which settings do I choose. So it, as it turned out the man from uh, Florida that distributes this software he was able to uh, do the uh, use my computer remotely and pick the proper settings. As you'll notice down here where the cursor is, there's a QuickTime video. You just click on it, you can watch. It shows you uh, the an explanation of give you some hope of finding out on each section of adjustment what would be a good thing to use. Uh, maybe a better situation would be just to do like I did here and after the man helped me I made a Microsoft Word document showing all the proper settings uh, that seemed to work out the best for making the graphic arts negative and converting it into the nice positive that you saw earlier. And so I would just uh, pause your screen perhaps and if you are interested uh, copy your screen or print it out on your printer and take a uh, make a printed copy of all these settings for, for the silver fast for the negative to positive. Very briefly up here we I'm using a TIFF image and then over here you give a name for the project you're working on and then you choose uh, the Epson scanner here and I'm using custom I'm using 1200 PPI and then we go down they also have at the bottom uh, something called expert uh, settings I, I put in the settings here for what uh, the letter size uh, piece of film uh, I've got 8-bit here and all these fine densitometer details that you're gonna have to get off that sheet of paper and then some more details the unsharp masking in uh, Epson scan 2 that came with the Epson it just had low medium and high 
and this one I put it on auto sharpness and then I have these detailed adjustments down here and here's your uh, QuickTime video for how to adjust how to make those adjustments what might be the best thing and then uh, here's something about working with negatives and uh, it, you can actually this is this program is so detailed you can put in the film type from a manufacturer like Kodak and it can uh, differentiate and adjust the settings accordingly so Bender is other film type is other because we don't know where this ortho film who the maker was or where it came from and then your uh, different tonal adjustments down here and color adjustments so uh, these are all the settings uh, you would see for uh, then up here in the top here you have free scan you click this free, free scan and then you get your marquee tool and then you drag in with these arrows here the uh, to get only the area you want to scan and not this black area which would if you included the black area it would uh, negatively affect the impact of the adjustments then after you've done the pre-scan then you'll be able you can also straighten the image up here with this tool uh, it, you can see it's a little bit crooked and I was able to twist this marquee adjuster here to to get it uh, straight so I don't have to straighten the negative in the glass and then we would press the scan button and it would scan the document and save it to the place that we designated at the top of the list up here where we were going to where we were going to put it over here on this folder right here the scan with uh, silver scan and this Epson uh, expression 12,000 XL photo scanner to do a letter size negative graphic arts negative at 1200 pixels per inch takes a total time of a nine minutes or more to do the scan and the processing of the scan what you see here on the screen in Photoshop now is the uncleaned result of that scan and you can see this is such an improvement over uh, trying to scan a printed tract however there are a few issues and uh, I'd like to go over the issues a few unwanted you see unwanted background specs here and there uh, the document is slightly crooked if you take and click in the margin the ruler and and bring down if you click in the ruler and bring down a blue line you can see uh, by putting it uh, underneath a line of text there and then blowing up you can see that there's a uh, slight crookedness in the document so a person would have to go into image up here in the pull down menu then rotation and then arbitrary and then you would uh, click on your clockwise or counterclockwise rotation in this case we'd want to go counterclockwise and you put the slight amount you want in there and then you go like this and it uh, processes and begins to twist the image until you finally get it straight and what you want when I magnified the document I found some defects overall yeah you know, little background things you don't want so I'm going to begin to show you quickly now how to adjust these things out you see if you magnify you may have a little background haze so by going under here under image adjustments and levels you can take the highlight slider over here and you can move it this way and you can see as you begin to move this highlight slider there was some background haze so I move it to the left and I get rid of some of the I can get rid of the haze there and then you can see like in this end over here up on the left that you've got uh, some some little bit of white speck inside some of the black so you take this uh, on the left this dark slider and you'd move it over like this and you would uh, be able to get rid of that and then you press OK so now let's how do we deal with this bad spot in the E and the R we're going to go over here and take the pencil tool and make sure it's on black and you pick the size of the tool up here and it, 
and adjust it to the size you want but I'm going to uh, be able to show you how you can add the black here very carefully you can even blow it up bigger and you'll be able to fix some of these blemishes in the uh, document and if you find a, a place where there's uh, an unwanted uh, black background spec you want to get out you press down here and flip the uh, thing around to the white in the top right corner I found some unwanted image here and you can take the pencil tool and you can also go over here and take the eraser tool and but the eraser tool has to also be switched around so I go edit undo eraser tool switch it around the other way and then it does the same kind of effect to get out all the unwanted background image I also noticed that for whatever reason the areas of text I call them the quadrants are not the text is not centered in the in the quadrants so what we'd like to do is you click in the ruler and you draw out a guideline and you would such say a quarter a printing press would need uh, three eight to uh, uh, five sixteenth or more of an inch but a laser printer only needs three sixteenth of an inch a non printable area so as you drag in the top margin and you 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 look at the ruler you set all these guide marks and then let's set another guide mark over here for this quadrant at two and three quarters so you divide the document up into quadrants and you see that uh, that the text is not centered in each column another factor is is that the size of the canvas side of the document is not quite 11 over here and it's not quite eight and a half over here so we're going to go image and we're going to go canvas size and you see the width is now uh, needs to be increased to 11 and we're going to make the uh, height eight and a half for a letter size printing on a letter size document then we're going to press OK so now things have changed so The idea is to have the text centered, column of text centered in the quadrant, and to still keep your 3 16th of an inch uh, no print area margin needed for a color laser printer. So I'm going to show you how to this one here is, is has less margin at the bottom than it does at the top. So I'm going to show you how to individually adjust a certain area so we'll take the marquee tool over here in the tools palette and then we uh, draw uh, the area of text over here a mark click and drag we use the marquee tool and we click and drag around the area we want to move And then we go up here under Edit, Transform. We're transforming just the individual piece. And uh, actually, we go File, and the we can use the Move tool here at the top of the Tools palette. And then we can use the arrow keys on the keyboard, and we'll be able to move the thing where we want it, move it over to the side a little bit, center it in the column. Suppose when you get done you don't want to put this might be an old address since this negative was from which this document was made was so old we're going to change the address. So first of all we're going to use the marquee tool and we're going to click uh, drag a mark the marquee around the what item we don't want there we want to replace with something else then we're going to you click on the move tool at the top of the tools palette then we're going to move that out of the way and now we're going to use the text tool down here we're going to go select deselect 
and use the text tool and we're going to draw in a new uh, text box. If you look closely you'll see the cursor flashing in the middle uh, to show that it's going to be centered text in that area. You see up here where the I-beam is, it's, I chose Arial for my uh, ty uh, typeface or font and I chose regular and nine point and sharp. Now in order to get more control you're going to want to go under here under view or under window and go down to and make sure the character palette is open and the paragraph palette is also open which it is. So I'll show you those over here on the right. You see the character palette gives you a little more control over spreading the letters, the spacing between the letters and whether you want up here in the corner, regular, narrow, italic, uh, bold, bold, italic, and down here the paragraph would allow you some spacing uh, between in, in, in adjusting the indent of the margin. And you see when you open down here in the layers palette, the text palette went on its own layer. So now I'm going to type in uh, my, the name of our business. Let's say I'd like to make that bold. So with the text tool, I click and drag across and go over here under Characters Palette and from regular to drop down to bold. Pressing the return key and taking off the bold enables me to continue typing in my address. Now let's zoom out, view, fit on screen. We can move this down a little bit first by just using the arrow keys while it's still selected on the move tool. We can move this down near the bottom. 
Now I'd like to show you one more thing, uh, how to convert this to a PDF. First let's go view fit on screen. This document isn't totally perfect yet, but the next step would be to make a PDF because now the file size you see down here is 128.4 megabytes, which is too large to put on the internet or pass around to people by means of email or email attachments. So the next step would be to go up here and to go uh, save as and then in the list here we have the name and we would choose uh, PDF. Photos in this case they call it Photoshop PDF right here. And then there are a few things we want to keep in mind when we're doing this. Press the save button here. And now we want at least high quality print. And we'd also like to we'd be ideally like to have press quality, but since laser printers uh, can't do the quality of a printing press, it's probably not necessary. So we want high quality print. And then uh, we'll be able to click on Save PDF and it will make our PDF. So here's the converted to PDF and if you go under File and Properties you'll find out the file size drop down from 128 megabytes as a TIFF image down to the PDF which is 11.42 which is a nice size and let's zoom in and I'll let you see that the quality doesn't seem to have sacrificed much in making it a smaller file size. We have reasonably sharp and even at 400 percent here you've got reasonably sharp text and you also have the the graphic images aren't too bad on showing jagged edges. And also another thing to consider is that when you do the laser printing somehow I noticed that the printed copy of the laser printer smooths out the letters uh, even more so you don't see any jagged edges. Laser printer that we have prints it 600 dot per inch. Uh, now in closing there is a, a drawback uh, to this negative method because everything that the graphic arts negative when you convert it to a positive is going to turn is going to be black and we have some documents that are multiple colors uh, for a printing press which require two negatives two plates so future a future video will tell us how to colorize uh, these videos uh, these documents and second of all how to uh, scan the different colored uh, negatives that match each other and put them into one Photoshop document and overlap them and combine them and that will clean up the screens uh, that the bad screens that we got when I showed you a sample of a trying to scan a press printed copy. This is the final result. You see the grid lines, the copy's been straightened, the background, unwanted background has been removed the flaws in the lettering of the negative had been corrected and uh, in this case on the top one over here on the left I was able to change the address by putting a new text layer and typing in my own information to replace the previous information that was as you see down here. And so now in closing I would like to show you how to colorize different parts of this negative so just for the sake of knowing how to do that even though there will be a separate video on that. The first step is to add a color, find out, decide which color we want. So when you go down here in the bottom of the tools palette and you double click on the overlapping black and white squares, you find uh, you could pick any color here you want. Uh, or I like to use the known colors in the Pantone matching system swatch book which is pretty expensive so if I go to color libraries here I'm going to I can uh, I want a soft Pantone solid uncoated color 
and I'm going to go down I'm going to move my slider here I could sometimes you can type in a number but I'm going to see if I can find something in the in the realm of a, a known uh, color, maybe at the beginning up here. Uh, like th this one here is called uh, a reflex blue. Reflex blue is uh, a pretty standard color, so I'm going to click on reflex blue and go OK. In order to add color before I can pick my reflex blue out the image up here because the document had been scanned as a grayscale, 8 bit grayscale I have to change the image mode and make it a color document so I'm going to go down here to RGB most color laser printers print in RGB some print in CMYK RGB prints a little lighter so now now we're going to see which mode it's in now okay it's in the RGB color mode now now I've got my reflex blue down here now we're going to take the magic wand tool over here the third one down in the tools palette and we're going to take the uh, the magic wand tool and we're going to click on the uh, the different just to see for now and then we'll switch over to the paint bucket tool here and uh, choose the paint bucket tool and now we should be able to we pour the blue right in there now if we want to do go back to the magic wand tool we uh, can uh, click on each each uh, hold the shift key down and click on the different letters we want to uh, change to a color then switch back to the paint bucket tool and click in the if if you don't want to have to use the if you're trying to do the whole document which is kind of time consuming assuming you can use another feature up here you can go under filter up here uh, or select and go down to similar and now you see all the letters of black and things that are black in the whole document are all the uh, selected now and if you if you wanted to take the time to use the paint bucket tool you could pour the the blue uh, into each letter originally this document printed on a printing press was printed uh, in uh, the reflex blue color that's it for now Stay tuned for a future video that will show you how to take the two negatives, one for each color, maybe a third negative for a third color that were used on a printing press that it prints two colors and with exact registration and how to combine those two, turn those two black negatives into the proper color you want and then when they're turned into a positive and combine the two together in Photoshop. Uh, to have a nice uh, something that looks like it came off a printing press only can be done by a person with less skill. God bless.